Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Big D and DPD's Tactical Operations Research and Development. I won't bore you with Rechu details, but since we're officially on the record this morning, let me quickly recap our charter. We scientists are like degreed science fiction writers. We're all prognosticators of the future. And since our particular purpose of vision belongs to the creed of law enforcement, we open inroads into tomorrow in the ways and means of those who would serve and protect justice and order. As you know, it's all my fault that for the past three and a half years, our public benefactors have channeled funds into this development project. Dr. Bryan, Wilson Institute of Hawthorne. Is this what your research has led up to? A tin marionette? Not quite. Another scientist, uh, Dr. Steele from Houston, developed a super technology constructed combat chassis out of an alloy. An unknown alloy, simply given an obscure number. <clears throat> I'm Dr. Carl, also from Wilson. What's your intent in some little known alloy? Is there some good vibration to its molecular tonality you can utilize? Exactly. Watch. Dr. Michael, Raman Love, East West Test Center. The chassis. How can it animate without gears and motors? I mean, I get around, but I've never seen anything like this. This combat chassis has been issued a prime directive, Doctor. Dr. Allen, Jardin University at Malibu. Are you saying this thing could do anything from aerobics to tai chi? Right, it can do karate to full field combat. Uh, Dr. Bruce, Jonathan Lab, Zuma Beach. God only knows this is spectacular, but what exactly are we dealing with here? Molecular memory and learning. All it needs is a spark. A current of electricity is a catalyst, an inducer, simulated brain impulse, in this case, a command. The metal itself has already been taught the aerobic movement by the particular electrical impulse of the induced corresponding command. And the molecules move the chassis into the remembered posture. The metal itself can learn, remember, and teach itself. It doesn't need motors, gears, and tubes. Just a flat place to stand, and a lever that's long enough, and it can move the world. Well, who are we who create such a thing? Heroes and villains? The only difference between a hero and a villain is the amount of compensation they take for their services. At our pay scale, I'd say we're heroes. <laughs> what are you planning, high-tech rock and roll to the rescue of civil law and order? You're on my wavelength and you're right. And I've already wondered if our creation is going to rescue society or destroy it. I think Dr. Frankenstein must have felt the same way. He was full of fine intentions himself, you know. Only he tried to harness death and we're trying to harness life. Either we control society or it destroys itself. <laughs> 